Good day, everyone. <clears throat> Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the MC34063A, a uh, little uh, DC to DC converter chip. It's very popular. Actually, it's uh, one that is very frequently used in, uh, let's see if I can find it, have a, those cheap 12 volt adapter that you can find. Uh, actually, I got a couple from Dollarama and uh, well they don't really last long but uh, they're not too expensive but they actually use uh, that nice little uh, very versatile chip that I use myself for various projects and um, I've used it recently in um, my little teapod uh, add-on and I uh, I said that I made that I had a tutorial about using that chip but uh, I haven't made one, so, <laughs> well, I apologize for that, and I'm going to make one right now. It's going to be a quick and dirty one. I'm not going to go too much in detail, because the only thing you need to know is you put voltage in, and it gives you something at the output that you desire. So, and uh, I also found a nice little website yesterday that actually, well, it's a little uh, development aid, and it actually quite, uh, it's actually quite good. Right now, I've put in a couple of value here, uh, 5 volts at my input. I want 16 volt at the output. Then I want to be able to pull about 120 milliamps of current through that. I want about 10 millivolts peak to peak of ripple. And my frequency, I want it to be 100 kilohertz, which is the max switching frequency of that chip. And boom, it gives me all the bunch of value here. And of course, it's not super accurate because 296 picofarad. I'm pretty sure you will never find that unless you use a variable capacitor. And the same thing for the resistor. So I've put in the basic value uh, in it that I had in hand. Actually, I put a 33 microandry choke. I have a 0.22 ohms resistor. I have a 180 ohm resistor, that's uh, pretty common. And R1 is actually 1K and R2 is 12K. And it gives me roughly 16 volt. And of course, if you wanted more precision, you can use a potentiometer instead of uh, either R1 or R2, or you can just use a big, a big potentiometer to get from zero to almost the uh, maximum voltage that this little uh, chip can do and it can give you up to uh, roughly 40 volts higher than that you might end up in going exceeding the breakdown voltage of Q1 then uh, you might also you if you actually want higher than that you can actually actually use um, high voltage MOSFET or transistor uh, to act to be driven by that chip, but you need a little couple of uh, extra component But I have it set up on my breadboard just before making the video. It is a little messy. I'm apologizing for that and While I use a big 330 micro farad capacitor, which is a little overkill But the bigger that one is actually the less ripple you'll have at the output and I have my little power supply right now giving me uh, 5 volts and I limit it at 1 amp. Actually this chip is supposed to be able to, to handle up to 1.5 amp. That's in peak, not constantly because it's switch and uh, you can find all that uh, nice and little information in the data sheet. So I have the circuit, the circuit made up with uh, my capacitor is a 330 picofarad my co my coil is a 33 micro and ream I have my 180 ohm resistor my 12k and my 1k here I use two um, diode here because these little diodes only able to handle about uh, I think it's like a hundred milliamps and I just didn't want to take any chance of uh, blowing them by pull pulling a little bit too much power in there and here I have my multimeter connected and of course right now we see a nice negative one volt that's probably just a static running around and I have a 28 volt light bulb here it takes about I think 20 milliamps to light up this uh, little bulb here so it's not gonna be a big load to the power supply but just to see it working so I'm gonna turn on ahead and turn on the power supply 
5 volts, and we're drawing right now 366, 67 milliamps, so it's still within the tolerance of the, the chip. And you see my light bulb is actually lit up, and I have 16.5 volts. And it's varying a little bit, up and down, up and down, so... Of course, I wouldn't use this chip if you want to use high precision, if you need high precision voltage, because it's not super efficient, but it works depending on uh, what you need to do. And I also have a little scope here. Ooh, the little wave is a little dirty. So, uh, there it is. And uh, the little ghostly uh, wave you see here is actually parasit from this power supply in combination with another one. So just ignore that. So you can see it's switching here. And I'm roughly at 10 volts per division on a Time 10 probe. So we have roughly 20 volt spike. And then it keeps uh, charging the coil and doing its wonderful job. And if I remove the light bulb, well, now the scope can't get the fix. Well, that's very simple because the chips actually charge the capacitor to the 16 volt and then it stops until it reached down to the threshold voltage and then it restarted. And we also see we're back to roughly 15 milliamps and still at 16.5 volts which is actually pretty good and I've used this chip in uh, many of a project for for mainly lighting LEDs especially a bunch of LEDs that you can you put them in series and uh, you just calculate it roughly what you need to pass in amps and for your circuit instead of having an R2 you di directly feed your LED through R1 and the voltage at the comparator uh, this that the pin 5 is roughly 1.234 volts so you can do Ohm's law and you can actually get your either your 20 milliamps your 100 milliamps your 300 and something milliamps depending on what you do and this actually converts it into a constant current power supply and of course if uh, for example you wanted to do a step down Let's just input some uh, number here. So my input will be 40, which is the maximum. And then calculate. And it actually switch from the step up to the step down converter. And it tells you all the new value you need to do for it. So for anyone that wants to build a nice and quick and dirty little DC to DC, this link is going to be post and I actually have a uh, more complex one that gives you all that uh, oops it gives you all the, the, the value you want you, you put your maximum voltage your input voltage your variation you, Personally, I think that's a little bit too much to ask if you just want something that's, let's say, take 3 volts and boost it to 5 volts to charge a cell phone or something like that. It's a little overkill. You can basically uh, do the basic math and um, just add the component, the required component depending on what you want to do. So this one is actually works pretty good. You want your V, you, you said what you want V in, and that's always the minimum that you will have. So if you have higher, well, just ignore it. Like if, let's say that my voltage minimum is 5 volt, and my, my power supply at the input may vary from 5 to 12 volt, well, you just leave it at 5 volt, and the rest of the value won't really change. It's just going to improve the efficiency of the circuit if you go higher in voltage. Like, uh, let's see, I'm going to plug that thing back in there. And I'm going to increase the voltage to, let's say, 12 volts. So, right now, I'm at 12 volts. 
roughly and we can see that we've just basically dropped the amp now I won't do any efficiency calculation here uh, that's just boring stuff for 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 those who really wants to do it well feel free to do it it's just a nice little way to use that chip and um, hope you enjoy thanks for watching